I believe he's running for Congress. Amen. So glad to have you folks this morning. Hallelujah. How many of y'all been enjoying the last uh, couple of days, couple of nights? Been blessed. Y'all working me. Y'all working me. <laughs> it's a good thing to work for the Lord. I was telling the kids, I have the best job in the world. Helping people to realize the faith that's in them to release their miracles. You know, old Roberts used to say, the, the miracle is already in you. You just have to release it. God made all of us, amen? So if God made all of us, that means there's a little bit of God in each of us, amen? And that creative power that he had, that he formed earth, he formed everything around us, he formed us, that's in us to create our miracles, amen? I just want to thank my friend Norman Clark. Norman, just stand up real quick. I've known this guy since, I don't know, seventh grade? Seventh grade, yeah, seventh grade. Went all the way through high school with him. He was my backup on the uh, soccer field. He was also my right wing. <laughs> but he's a good friend. And I uh, just want to introduce you to him. Um, he's also running for Congress. And, and you know, I was, he didn't even know I was going to mention that. But uh, he's in your in your parish. And I don't know how, how Texas is different. So however that works here. But he's a good man with God in his heart. He's a veteran as well, as, like myself. And he's, he's just doing what God's telling him to do. So we, we just pray for him. How about y'all? Can y'all pray for Norman? All right. God bless you. Hallelujah. I tell you what, let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this time. Father, we thank you, Father, just for the attentiveness for everyone here, Father. Let them sit like they sat at Jesus' feet today and hear what he has to say. Father, this is your word. This is your message. And it was catered and it was cultivated for them, Lord. It was for them because you knew today that they will be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I believe we're going to see many healings. Amen? I believe, we have to believe that, right? Well, every time you come inside this church, you got to believe something's going to happen for you that's good. Amen? There's too many things out there that happen to it, to any one of us that could be bad. You know, the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. The sun rises on the just and the, and the good and the evil. What that means is life goes through for everyone. It's how you handle it. It's how you, how you wake up and how you shake it off. Uh, the last couple of days, I've, we've been preaching about encouragement. And I'm not. I'm, I'm going to keep going with that. I want to. I want to encourage you that each day is a day closer to your miracle, closer to the vision that God has made for you. I'm not coming up here just hyping things up and saying how wonderful God is. No, I'm a proven vessel. Pastors are proven vessels. The men and women of God in here, you're proven vessels that God can do amazing things, that God can do great things with you, that God can move and shake shake the world around you when you believe nothing i love that nothing is impossible for god you know what when i was in the navy i want me to appreciate this i was in the navy i was standing in the mid watch i was up on top of the on top of the uh, above the pilot house where they drive the ship and uh, yeah they let me drive the ship too that's crazy that was part of my job i mean i drive okay in a car here but man on the ship i feel like that's not bad there ain't nothing to hit <laughs> so i drove that thing Anyway, I'm up there, and I'm sitting on the on the top of the. Uh, they're looking, and, I, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. There's nothing happening in activity, so I'm praying to the Lord. I'm always praying to the Lord until the captain or someone says, hey, Padre, shut up, because <laughs> I'm always talking to God. We should always be talking to God. When you're driving in your car, okay, pay attention to the road, but talk to God. Commune with him. You know, I have a friend that's always uh, talking to me, t- telling me of, of things that he's done in his ministry, and he's been a great friend of mine, he's 76 years old, named Gerald Davis, and I asked him, how many hours did you pray when you were out there doing the ministry and doing so much? He goes, David, I have never ceased from praying. There ain't no hour or two hours where I'm always in communion with him. John Osteen, my pastor, when I was growing up, used to say, this is what he used to tell the ministers, he used to have the regular ministry, but then he'd have a, a, a special session on Saturdays and sometimes Sunday nights for just the ministers, and he said, you know, Dave, he goes, you know, guys, this is what I do. I have to do like John. John used to always like this. He goes, I used to, he goes, I always stay prayed up. I always stay read up. I always stay communed up. So whenever I'm needed, I'm giving from the top and not giving from the bottom. Whenever
whatever faith is needed in my life, I'm able to take what I'm from the top and not from the bottom. That's what we're going to talk to about today. This morning we're going to talk about the levels of faith that's out there. Because we can have faith like this, and on a sneeze, our faith can be like this. Come on, how many have been there? I was, I was um, on watch, watching the uh, ocean, not much to watch out there, just water. My wife gets after me, why don't you like to go to the beach so much? <laughs> I'm like, I lived it <laughs> for too long. I've seen too much water, I don't want to see any more water for a long, long time. That's 20 years ago. But as I'm up there, I hear that small, still voice of the Lord. And when I, I hear it, and the Lord whispers to me, don't lay down. And I said, Lord, what was that? Tell my people not to limit me. And I thought about that. I said, okay, Lord. I'm, thinking how, think, I'm trying to think of ways how I limit God. Think of ways how I might stop and hinder him from things happening. And then he he tells me, when I pray, I go, Lord, how, how? How do we limit you? And then with a loud voice, with a loud voice, he just yells in my spirit, you limit how I can do things for you. You limit how I can use you. You limit how I can meet your needs. You limit and you hold me back from doing what I can because you don't believe. You limit me. Because you think there's a time limit. He goes, son, I have no time limit. You limit me how long you will wait for me. He yelled that in the spirit. He goes, tell it to my people. I went down to the mess decks. It was, it was mid-watch. They were just getting the food ready. And I, I was sitting there, and my friend came up. And his name's Teddy. And this man, you know, I wasn't always this bold and courageous and crazy. But God will send you a friend that just dances around you shouts at you. How many of us is that friend? I think Alan's that friend. <laughs> I think Alan's that friend. And it just gets you excited. No matter what, they're excited for God. And I was young. I was about 19 when I went in. And I'm, I'm sitting there and he looks and he goes, oh, brother David. And I'm like, oh, Lord, it's Teddy. <laughs> he comes up. He's like, this is my head. He's just staring at me like this, smiling. He walks around me and he goes, yes, you've been with the Father. You've been with the Father this morning. I'm like, Teddy, calm it down. He goes, tell me, what did, what, what did our daddy tell you? I call God daddy. He goes, what did our daddy tell you? He said, tell me, he told me not to limit you. He told me, and he just, and then, of course, Teddy just gets up. Oh, oh, what else did he tell you? He said, tell my people not to limit them. He goes, well, what do you do? What are you going to do? guess when we get to shore, I got to go tell people. He goes, David, 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 give me your hand. And he gives me, my, I give him his hand. He moves all the food off the table. He walks me on top of the table. And he leads me there. There's your people. Tell them what God has said. And I was like, okay, I just start preaching. All the mess decks of the ship and how I limit God. There wasn't a dry eye in the place, and then I, got, I then I then I got off, and of course they got in trouble. But it was worth it. <laughs> we limit him, don't we? We limit him. Do you know God gives us each a measure of faith? He gives us each a measure of faith. Let's read this. I like using the word when I talk about faith, and the reason I tell you this when 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 you read the word, it is the only thing. You can get faith from. Come on. How do you see faith? But hearing by the word of God. You have to hear the word of God. You've got to read the word of God. If you're not reading and you're not hearing the word of God, then you're not going to increase your faith. But God gives you faith because he's God. Let's read here in 1 Timothy, or actually in Romans 12.3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. He has given us the measure of faith. That means the moment you believe, the moment you agreed, the moment you stepped into the kingdom, faith was deposited in you. Now whose job is it to keep that faith going? 
Whose job is it to believe? I can't believe for pastor. Pastor can't believe for me. Pastor can pray for me and believe for something in my life, but it's up to me to move my faith forward. Amen? Amen. Let's look at, um, let's go and stay right there real quick. If you continue reading the scripture from four to, four to eight, he says, for as many members in the body and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one in body in Christ and every member one of another, having the gifts different according to the grace that is given to us for the prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion, what does that say? The proportion of faith. The proportion of faith. So there's a measurement of faith. Then he continues, our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Now, I don't go much Bible scholar on you, but this, on this one I have to go a little bit Bible scholar on you. The reason Paul wrote this was there were some people that had the gift of tongues, there were some people that had the gift of healing, there were some people that had the gift of prophecy, and some of them thought themselves to be more than the others. But, and then, so the guy in gift of prophecy was coming over here trying to do healing. It wasn't his gift. Although we all pray for the sick, there's some that just have a gift. And they, they would think, that they were beginning to think they're self more than what they should have been. But Paul was explaining, work in your faith. Do, work the faith that God has given you, which is yours. But what I like to take out of this, like I told you the last couple of nights, I read things a little differently. That tells me that there's some that, there, that our faith goes from here to there. Your faith always goes somewhere. Your faith constantly moves up. It constantly moves down, depending on what you believe. Remember the last couple of nights, I've been really reiterating this. I was, I've been saying this to you because I want you to get this in your spirit, and I want you to hold this in your hands, that whatever you feel, whether it's faith or whether it's fear, you receive. Faith will produce what you believe. Fear will produce what you believe. If you believe I'll never get healed, you'll never get healed. If you believe, oh, I know God will get me through this, he'll get you through it. He'll get you through it. We can have the highest moments in our life. We can have the highest highs of faith. How many have been there? Where, oh, nothing could stop you that day. Oh, nothing could hold you back. Oh, man, you can believe for anything. But the very next day, maybe even the next hour, your head's down and you're hiding. Like, I don't know how. Oh, how do we get? I believe for this car, but now I don't know how I'm going to pay it. Oh, God. Come on. Come on. We all have high moments. We all have low moments. But it's what you do in the low moments to pull yourself back to get in where you have to be. I don't believe you can live on the high all the time. Because life hits, and we're, we're natural. Although we're supernatural, we're natural. We have to gather ourselves and keep going forward. But you see, I like to tell people this. If you're going to go on a low, don't make it public, okay? Don't go on Facebook. <laughs> don't go posting your problems. <laughs> we are to be a light to this world. Come on. We are to be a light to this world. And they're going to think you're crazy. Literally, if you're high and low, high and low, they go, this guy is bipolar. Something's wrong with this person. This, this, he's on, he needs meds. I want to send him some meds. Dude, what's your address? If you look on my Facebook, <laughs> you, I am not bipolar on there. <laughs> I keep that at home in my office. <laughs> I have to be honest. I have, I have the strongest and greatest month we had in ministry last month. Everything was gelling. Everything was moving. And this is just some advice to you. Everything was going great. 4,500 people in Humble that we prayed for laid on hands. I walked by them, and it got to the point where I'm just, I started just blowing on the just, and I do that today. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's just what God wants to do. Sometimes it's not. I go with whatever he has for that moment. But sometimes I'm laying hands old school, waiting in the hip. Sometimes it goes quick. 2,500 people prayed for us. Three weeks later, four weeks later, miracles are still being testified People still being healed. Woman woke up a day later, completely healed. Your miracle don't happen sometimes in a second. Tonight I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to preach my igniter of faith sermon. So if you want to hear that, you come tonight. This doesn't happen sometimes in front of us. It takes time for faith to release and for it to get to where you're at. And I'm going to cover that tonight. But that was, my high, that was one of our highest moments. And then 
maybe a week later or so, that fear started to raise its face up. That fear started to come into my life and trying to get me irritable. Come on, who gets irritable when fear hits? Come on, I ain't lying. I got a little irritable. My kids know it. They'll be quiet in the back, boys. <laughs> That's my son Nathaniel and Matthew. Train up a child in the way he must go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. And then they, they may go, but they will not depart from it. The Bible says that when he goes, he will not depart from it. So there's going to be a, a walk that they all have to have themselves. Amen. You can't live life for them. You can only give them good choices and faith. They, they live by watching you. And even in the crazy moments, I told my wife, I know sometimes she's like, she doesn't understand how I can be so strong one minute and then the smallest thing can get you, right? The smallest thing, the big thing just happened, miracles, healing, deliverance, and then the small thing comes in, what do you mean? <laughs> but my friend, uh, uh, Gerald, had lunch with them, and, I, and some, I, don't, I want everybody to know that they can reach out to people. Come on. I want you all to really pray about a person in your life that you know that you can just come to. It may be pastor. It may, it may be sister. Um, it may be anyone around you that you can come to just when you're down, that you're not ashamed to tell them something. Just to, not so You don't got to tell them all the circumstances. Just tell them that you're a little down. You need encouragement. You need that. Someone that's not going to judge you. Someone that's going to say, you know what, I understand. Let me give you a hug. Come on, let me take you to lunch. Let's go to Starbucks. Let's do something. I tell you what, the worst thing you can do when your faith has left you is be in a pit. Is be in the dark. Turn off your computer because you're going to go ranting on Facebook and Twitter. Your social media. Don't even, just, just don't even look at the computer. Because that temptation is going to overtake you. Because it will overtake you. But you constantly... Get in front of people. Get in front of people that love the Lord. You don't gotta, you may be doom and gloom walking in. But get in a place where the word is being preached. Turn on the turn on something that's that's gonna encourage you. But don't separate yourself. How many of us know when we're in our darkest hours, we don't want to talk to anyone? Our phones just ring and ring and we keep hitting decline. Keep hitting decline. They text you, you, you act like you don't even see your phone. It's mm, 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 mm. Your phone go off. It's true. The devil wants to separate us. The moment fear hits, we separate ourselves naturally. It's not something we got to think about. It's just natural. Oh, I don't feel on time, but I got to go. That's what happens when fear hits. And I tell you this, fear is not from God. The Bible says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. I have not given you a spirit of fear. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound of mind. Ooh, I'm glad he said sound mind. Oh, because sometimes my mind don't seem sound. Come on. Sometimes that enemy's whispering. He started with Jesus in the garden. You know what? He, he even started before that. As pastor was saying, thousands, he went up serving to the angels and whispered in their ear, we're going to be like God. We're going to be like God. He is a whisperer and a deceiver. He comes in to put you aside from the flock because he comes in dressed like a lamb. And he's trying to take you away. I tell you this. My biggest thing about growing in faith is you can't grow in faith as strong. Now, you can grow, but you've got to have a home church. You've got to have a place where you're rooted. You have to have a place where God can say, now stay there for a year, and I'm going to bless you. It's called submitting. It's called sitting under someone's authority and anointing. And in the scriptures, and I don't have time to teach that sermon, but it, it's out there. It's called Why Do You Go to Church? And I tell you what, I want everyone in here just to take one. You ain't got boys, you give them one. You, if you feel like you have that problem in your heart, you just take one of the CDs. Just tell the boys, they don't have to listen. They're trained. They are trained. <laughs> Watch out for the skinny one. <laughs> the real skinny tall one. He's fast. But no, just, just take it. That's my gift to you. I want to sow it into you. Because you need to know why it's so important to be here. In Psalms 1, it talks about the tree. The tree that is planted. The tree that is planted. And only when the tree is planted can the water go over it. And the water is the word of God and the Holy Ghost going over it. Going over it. And only when that, that tree is planted will its branches come forth in its due season. Come on. So I want you to be encouraged. And that's my gift to you over there. 
I tell you what, we all remember a, a, a certain individual that was that was uh, in in a sim similar situation that had the greatest high in his life, and that was Elijah. Come on, Elijah had the greatest high in his life. He the whole nation hadn't received rain, and then he decided, if in spirit he knew it was time, he sought the Lord, and he said, Lord. Let the rain come. Let the rain come. The king pleaded to him, and he finally lifted. That's what faith can do. Faith can hold things off, and faith can bring things in. Come on. That's what faith can do. And, and he went over there, and he, he looked and said, his assistant, go and see what's out there. Look at the clouds. Ain't no clouds yet, Mr. Elijah. I got a little sham back in me, okay? <laughs> I grew up under that anointing, too. And he said, well, go again. Because there's something that looks like a fist of a man. We all know that story. Come on. And he said, come on. He said, get me my chariot. And then he took off. Right? He took off to see the rain. Rain came to a place that was didn't have rain for many years. What a high. You see water hitting everywhere. Now, if you prayed that prayer, how would you feel? If you stopped that rain and then you started it, how would you feel? There's a high in faith that you can get to. When you see miracles like that. Elijah, I could just see the burly looking man running. Yeah. But then he met a lady named Jezebel. And this was a day afterwards. Come on, people. He just started rain. And a day later, he gets afraid of something. It didn't matter if it was a woman, a man, or a dog. The dog is scaring me sometimes, so I have to really work on that one. But it, whatever fear's face is, it took everything that was Elijah away. It took everything he believed away. Whatever he had in the fullness of faith that he was in, it was gone. In an instant. Who have, has been like that? I must say I have. Just this month. I would tell you that. But I tell you what. God has great things. When you come back to him, you come out of your little cave, amen, and you, and you actually allow him to do something. I tell you, Elijah, I'm going to read this real quick to you. I'm going to read it real quick because there's something here I want you to get. It's 1 Kings 19, 1 through 9. It says, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and was how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me more also. If I may not take thy life as a life of one of them by tomorrow by this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for, for his life. He, he freed. He, he freaked out and he ran. Fear will make you do something naturally that your spirit don't want to do. Come on. Your flesh overtakes it and runs. Then after, after that, he said, but he goes, if, they, I take, if I take thy life by tomorrow. And when he heard that, he rose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, and which belongeth to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey. He went as far as he could. Come on, how much of us? That sounds like us. When fear hits, he went as far as he could, came and sat down under a Jupiter tree. Jupiter tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it was enough now. Oh, Lord, take away. Oh, my goodness. Have we ever said that in our life? I can't handle it. The embarrassment, the shame, whatever. I can't handle it. He said, if I would die. And as he lay and slept, whoo. He laid and slept. That's what I want you to get. Depression comes in. And when depression comes in, you go to sleep. When depression comes in, you just want to lay in bed and watch TV. You don't want to eat. It shows, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it shows, even in the scripture, that he wasn't eating. Because the angel of the Lord had to bring him food to eat. He wasn't looking for food. When you're hungry, do you wait for someone to bring you food? When you're hungry? You go make your sandwich. Oh, I love hamburgers and sandwiches. So I go find me a hamburger or a sandwich. If I make me some, I feed the kids. I cook a lot. When I'm hungry, I cook. Elijah just sat there. God had to send an angel to bring him food, and he still wouldn't eat. And the angel had to keep pressing him to eat, so he finally ate. Depression is real. It holds you back. It keeps you from getting what God wants you to have. Oh, I love my pastor, Pastor David. I have two pastors, three pastors. I mean, I call them all my pastors. Uh, pastor David Hope, he's one of, my, one of my good friends. He's like my big brother. 
and, and he uh, he talks all the time. If you want to hear about the goodness of God, come to my church over there in Houston when you're ever visiting. That's all he talks about. But it's a good message to know God's goodness, to know that he wants good things for you. He wants to bless your house. He wants to bless your children. He wants you healed. He wants you delivered. He wants things for you that you could never, ever imagine. The Word of God tells us that in Jeremiah. He, you know, I had Marilyn Hickey on my show, um, on my radio. I do a radio show Tuesdays and Thursdays online. You can hear it anytime. And, and we're, when I'm on, on the air, I had Marilyn Hickey, and I asked her at the last part of the show. I said, Miss Marilyn, would you mind praying for those that are out there? We've got about five minutes. Just take your time and just bless the people. Said David, I have a word for you. And I said, Oh wow! So I got my pen out really quick, even though I'm recording it. I got my pen out, so I went to write it down. Write it down. Amen. Put it up, put it up on the doorpost. That way, you're looking at it, you're seeing it, you're making, you see your vision happen for you. He said, I'm in. Because God said that that He has He's enlarging in your tent. He's giving you more more avenues, more places you're going to reach. But He said, He said, Come unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And then she goes, this is what I'm hearing in my spirit, how God is reading that scripture to me. And it's, of course, in Jeremiah, she says, spend time with me. Take some time and just get aside with me. I know your dreams. I know your desires. And I want to put things in your hands that you couldn't dream, that you could never desire, because I have so much I want to give you. That's God's goodness. Come on. That's God's goodness. Well, Elijah, in his story, we all know it, he ended up going to a cave for 30 days until the Lord just came in and said, Elijah, what are you doing in here? God physically was in there with him and said, what are you doing in here? Get up. Get up. In that moment, his faith started to grow. I tell you, there's so many times in the word of God that we see faith not happening. I'm going to just give you three, four examples of quick quickly on uh, faith not just hitting. But I want to tell you this. There's nothing you can do on your own, physically, spiritually or mentally, for faith. It is given by God. It says in Ephesians 2, 8, for, grace, for by grace, everybody say grace, are we saved through faith, not of ourselves, but a gift of God. He gave it to us. We have the faith. It doesn't matter if you did something wrong today, tomorrow, or whenever. Your faith is given to you by grace. It is not earned. You don't have to be in proper, right ways in, in, to have faith. It is given by grace. In the blood of God, there's nothing you can do, and there's nothing you can say to take away grace. Grace is God's grace to give. Amen? Now, the disciples, oh, we know those, those guys changed the world, but, man, they were a tough bunch to get going. How can you go and see the miracles of God? And see the things that God is doing. And see blind eyes healed, deaf ears healed, legs growing, arms growing. But then you forget food and you freak out. And Jesus looks at you and says, man, we've done more than this, guys. And they start wondering amongst each other, wondering amongst each other. Oh, well, what do we got? Grab that kid's lunch. Look, Jesus, we got some fishes and some loaves. Oh, ye of little faith. Come on. Their faith left them. Jesus said, oh, poor kid, let me make your fish. I'll just keep the 12 baskets after this. <laughs> little faith. So our faith at times can be little. Little. Then when the, when the wind was blowing and hitting the, the, the ship and it was moving it back and forth, I tell you, Norman, and I can tell you that it's no fun. Especially if you're, I was on watch during one of those times. I'm driving the ship. Everybody else is strapped up in their bed. We're going through a typhoon. I'm like, oh, oh God, be back. <laughs> it was horrible. It's a scary situation because that, that you were at the mercy of that water. And you're just really at God's grace and mercy there. The disciples spilt the same thing. And Jesus, they woke up. Jesus, Jesus man, he was sleeping. You know why? Jesus, I'm going to read you a scripture because I've because for those that aren't sleeping in faith and those that need to sleep, I want to tell you this beautiful thing that God told us. Proverbs 3, 24, 26. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy shalt, shalt sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord 
shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot before being taken. That is, a, that is an awesome scripture. That is an awesome scripture that you know that when you lay down, you have sweet sleep because God promised it. Jesus was a, Jesus obviously, obviously Jesus showed us by example. The whole ship's going crazy. Everybody's screaming and he's asleep. Jesus had sweet sleep. Come on. He can sleep through a storm. How many of you can sleep through a storm? I know I can. I'm crazy to storm sometimes, how I snore. Very much so. But I tell you what, when he got up, what did he say? You have no faith. That's, pre that's pretty strong. You have no faith. In other words, their faith was completely depleted. But of course, they still have faith, but they had no faith to move this. And if you study the very words that Jesus preached, when he screamed at the, when he commanded the sea to stop and the wind to stop, it is the very same words he used when he commanded the demons out of the boy in the cemetery. So that tells you this. There's evil in things that try and take your life. Come on. There's an evil. There's a, there's a spirit that's trying to, it's a spirit of death trying to take people. And, and that is where you got to stand up in faith and believe. And, you want, and, and that's why Jesus said you have no faith because you can't recognize what's coming at you. It is not a natural occurrence. It's a spiritual occurrence. Come on. That's coming after your life. Then we look at something that I love. The centurion and the, the Seraphonician woman. Both came and asked for prayer for someone else. Both asked for God to intercede, asked for Jesus to intercede. And he looked at both of them, not because they came and asked the request, but because they knew how this worked. The, the centurion said, you command many you don't have to come to my house. Just say it, and the very things that are bothering him will leave. He understood it. You are in control, and what you say, it'll happen because they have to obey. That is faith. That is faith, and Jesus marveled. What great faith, because I ain't got to explain it. I ain't got to tell you we're going to do this and that. No, but you just believe if I say it, it'll happen. Yesterday I told you, life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's in the word. Then, this, then the, the Seraphonician woman, when she was sick, when she went to go pray for her, asked for prayer, he, how many of y'all would stand there if the preacher said, no, it's not for you, it's for someone else? You'd get insulted. But despite it, she knew, she knew how it worked. She said, you, you know, even when she threw the insult, she was quick. She said, you know, he said, you know, not even, not even the dogs are, are worthy of the bread. And then that's when she said, no, but they even eat the crumbs. They eat the crumbs. There's a little crumb. I just need a crumb. I don't need the whole loaf. Come on. Just give me a crumb. And what happened? Jesus marveled at her faith because she understood it. It just takes a little bit of faith. Oh, my. Imagine one day when we're at a 100% level in faith. All of us at one time. Come on. All of us at one time. Just believing. And I tell you, there's only two people in the Bible. Stephen and Barney, that were said to be full of faith. You can read it. It's in the Word. Two, and they did great things for God. It said full of faith. That's the only one. So if they could be full of faith, that means there's a level that we all have to be at. And we have to believe. Let me tell you some miracles that happen when faith, when you, when you can get a room, and this is my job. This is my job. It's to release faith in this atmosphere. Amen? It's to get you from doubting. And it gets you from being discouraged. It's going to get you from doing anything else but believing. And when you do that and you create a fullness of faith in the room, we can call it that, it ignites the air. And when the air ignites, when the air around us ignites, miracles happen. Things happen for people. I'm going to tell you some quick testimonies. 84-year-old woman, I told this the other day, but some of you are here for the first time. And we're, that 84-year-old woman, last person I prayed for, walked up with a cane. Left her cane at the altar. Two, after two hours of waiting, she was healed. Lady with back problems. Took uh, overnight, but she got healed. Overnight. I was at a Chick-fil-A um, by my station. And I'm sitting there. Someone comes up and just taps me on the shoulder, and I turn around. And the lady just came up and hugged me and said, I just want to tell you I enjoyed your service. This is three or four days later from preaching. That's never happened. She said, what you preached changed my husband's life. He never ran up to the altar. 
We've had every guest minister come in and every minister preach before for three years, and he never came to the altar to give his life. He gave his life. Come on. Miracles happen when you preach on faith. When you believe and you remove doubt, faith happens. There's a woman that was completely paralyzed in her faith, completely paralyzed. And as I'm preaching, as I'm preaching, her face got healed. Miracles happen whether you're sitting there, whether you walk up, whether, you, whether you're standing in line, and, or whether you're have, waiting for me to pray for you, or when you leave, your miracle happens. There's a little boy in India. I love sharing this story. Crooked leg, like that. We got the kids in India. They all come running up in the middle. They just come running up, and I'm just praying real quick, just smacking them. Not really hard, but just going real quick. Like that game where you call it and smack it. All the, all the adults know it. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I go beat that thing too. These kids, these kids. <laughs> but that the little boy came through. I barely remember him. I went two hours away. Um, two hours later, 80 kilometers away, he's working with his dad. I'm at another service, ready getting going in this next service. And in that next service, 500 people got healed on the inside of the church, and 500 people on the outside of the church got healed. And, and, and they were Hindu and Muslim on the outside. There was not a sick person in that village. So I'm all excited about that. We're coming back to this church to do our, fa- our final service. We came back, and the mother's telling me the testimony said she called her son, or her son called her, and she goes, oh, did you fall down again? Did you get hurt again? Did, what happened? You know, you got a kid that has, has knees like that, you're just worried. It's natural. And he's, he's, like, he's like, mom, I'm a, mom, I, I feel t- Jesus touching my leg. I feel Jesus touching my legs. He's walking upstairs. He gets to the top of the stairs, and he starts crying and crying and crying and crying. And he goes, oh, what happened? What happened? You know, she's 80 kilometers away. She's trying to figure out what happened. He goes, Mom, I see the hands of Jesus straight in my leg. And he was healed. This is in India. True story. True testimony. Two hours after we prayed, the healing came in. I mean, his healing came in. There's this little boy in Africa. A little little guy. He's like no more than three, four years old probably. We got, and, and it's like his legs are just limp. You ever see this life not in some legs or not in some limbs? It was just hanging there. And I looked at pa- Bishop Mike. I said, Mike, go get him. And sometimes, I tell you what, my friends, you ain't got to ask around me. I'm going to come pray for you. If I see it's something in the spirit, I'm going to come pray for you. I'm going to believe with you. It, it may be out of what we do. I'm just going to walk over there and pray because I see something that needs to be released. And I have compassion. I want to see God move in your life. I want to see something happen. And then he, he went over there, and he brought him over there, and he prayed for him. And I said, bring him up. So he brought him up, and I prayed over his legs. And I kept praying, and I, and I will massage your legs. If you want a good massage, just come up. No. <laughs> I'm massaging his leg, just touching, seeing it, until I felt his leg become a little firmer, a little stiffer. I said, oh, God's doing something here. And I kept going and going. I said, and Mike's like, really going crazy. I go, dude, we're not going to break his leg. No. <laughs> you can't rush God. God's going to do this. And I put him down. I told Mama, I go, Mama, he's going to complain, but you're going to make him walk. If you got to hold him and walk him like he needs to walk, I go, how bad do you want your son to walk? Oh, I want him to walk bad. I go, then you walk him until he walks. And after he walks, he goes, then he make him stand. Make him always move those legs around. Make him do, never forget every second to be moving those legs. And he'll be, be, he'll be able to walk. And he started moving around a little, like Bambi. You know, when a Bambi is like getting up off the ground like that. And I'm like, okay. So we left. I come back to preach six months later in the same areas. And when I'm out there, they, they test, they're testifying at church. And I see that little boy coming up walking normally. And, he, and his mother comes up and says, I want to thank the man of God, but I'm, I'm very upset with him as well. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Kenyans get offended very easily. I've, I have a list of people I've offended. <laughs> but no, I'm playing. So she comes up there and she goes, the man of God prayed for my boy for his legs to be healed. I took him to school because he could walk. He could walk barely side to side there. And he kept going to school and stuff. And now he gets in trouble at school. And it's the man of God's fault. And I'm like, well, why is he getting in trouble? He goes, because he will not stop running everywhere. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he will not stop running everywhere. And the teacher gets after him, gets after him. And I was with my friend Gerald telling him the story that one day. He goes, let the boy run. <laughs> Amen. Let him run. How many of us need to run to die? How many of us need to see some great things happen in our life? How many of us need to see God move and change 
I, I know that your faith right now is charged. So I want you to, I want you to stand up as I read some more testimonies to you. There's people standing in, in the line, but there's one person that stood in line, and she, and she just stood in the line to hug me. And she's like, well, I mean, I know I'm good looking, but please. No. <laughs> I, I went up to her, and I, I'm like, I was, what do you need? She goes, I don't need anything. When you were preaching, God healed my back. 20 years back probably, and I'm healed. I just want to hug you and tell you, keep doing what you're doing, because it seems to work. How many of us know it works? It works when you believe in God. It works. You know, the title of this, this is actually a chapter out of my book that I'm writing, the Niner Facebook, will be out in another maybe eight months, depending on the publisher. But it's just one chapter. And that chapter is titled, Faith Overcomes Fear. Come on. Faith always overcomes fear. No matter wherever you're at in life, if you believe, Jesus said, if you believe, it can happen. Whatsoever, whosoever. You know, I was on a, on a plane. We're going to do that tonight. The whatsoever, whosoever thing that I usually do. I tell you this. I, I was in Kentucky doing the Lord's work. And you think, oh, well, Lord, I'm doing your work. You're going to get me home fine. I get a, I get a, ca a call from Delta. Thank God I'm on a, a golden member there because they probably wouldn't call me if I was silver at that time. And they call me right away. And Delta's a little prejudiced now. I'm being honest. They, they, they rechanged everything. I'm very mad at them. But anyway, at that time, I was a golden member. And they, call, they called me over there, and, and they, they uh, said, they said, Mr. Yannis, your flights have been canceled into Houston. I go, well, that, that's five hours from now. I go, what's happening in Houston? I'm, I'm in Louisville. And I'm looking at there, and I'm looking on the phone. There's like, huge winter storm coming to Houston. <laughs> I'm like, it just, it, you know, they just had one on a Friday. And I'm like, oh, man, I didn't even think of that. I just want to, you know, when you're finished, you just want to go home. You're done. You're, you're d you know, when it's been released, it's done. There's some ministers that want to go for two weeks. I'm like, no, it's done. How much more can you preach? How much more can you? You can't walk them to their miracle. They got to believe. And then you got to give that seed time to grow. How many of us know faith takes time? It takes time to grow. It does, sometimes doesn't happen. Sometimes when you need to finance a miracle, it takes time of sowing seed, putting gifts in. I only have a radio station today because I sold for two years to a radio station gift. I wanted a station, I sold for a station. I wanted a TV station, I sold for a TV station. And God delivered it. I tell you this, my friends. When I was looking at that, I'm like, well, what can you get me on right now? And I don't even know how I'm going to get there. I mean, the pastor's been coming to take me to lunch, and he's going to take me to the airport. And, but he wasn't going to be there till 1. It was 11.30. And I said, okay, Lord, uh, what, what can we do? The lady's like, well, there's nothing to do. I go, you're telling me with all the thousands of planes on the air, up that you have in the air, there's not one by chance going by Houston before 4 o'clock? Could you put me on something now? She goes, it's a gamble, but this. I go, I don't gamble. I have faith. I don't gamble. I have faith. I said, go ahead. Put me on that plane. What, what? She goes, if you get to the airport in an hour, I can get you home. I said, that's fine. But then that storm's still coming. I go, don't worry about the storm. I'll take care of that. Just get me on the plane. That was my faith. The woman didn't understand. And she's putting me on. She goes, you sure you want to do this? Then the door knocked. I go, give me a second. Open door. There's some guy coming by that knew I was staying at that hotel. Not very secure that they gave him my hotel room. But anyway, they, I was like, okay. And, uh, and he goes, he goes, hey, Dr. Dave, can you pray for me? I'm like, you know where the airport is? <laughs> That's the first thing I asked. He goes, yeah, I know where the airport is. Okay, get in the car. We're going to the airport. Grab my bag. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll pray for you on the way. I said, book the ticket. I'm going to the airport right now. Boom. That's how faith operates sometimes. I got to the airport, got my ticket, got on the plane, and, I, and, and, and I, they got me to Atlanta. Atlanta wasn't an issue. It was getting to Houston. I said, Lord, I believe when I'm in the air, I speak to this air right now. I'm praying out loud. I don't care who hears me. That this wind will take, this wind, this jet stream will pull that thing to Miss Houston. That it'll miss Houston. It'll hit somewhere else, even to Atlanta after I'm gone. I leave it, Lord, in your hands. I do not care what happens after that. You get me home. I've done your work. I've seen miracles and deliverance. And there was a, such a demonic force that night. So many demon possessed. And I said, Lord, I bind this demon that's trying to hold me back from getting home. And I speak to this air to let me go through. And do you know what happened? When I got to Atlanta, they said, you know, Houston's going to only open until 4, so just barely get you in. They got me in. Do you know my kids are waiting for snow the next morning? There was no snow in Houston. That storm missed us, and it hit Atlanta and made that blizzard over there. True story, my friends. I prayed it in the air. That's what faith can do for you. Come on. I'm not saying go over there and stand on the freeway and say, cars, you're going to miss me. I'm going to guarantee you're going to get hit. You will get hit. There's a logic to faith sometimes. <laughs> There's a logic. 
Let's, let's all stand and just, pr- and just praise God for a second. We're going to do things uh, just normally as we do it, but I want those that need to be healed to come up. And I want those that need deliverance to come up. If you just want prayer, go ahead and come up. But I really feel a healing anointing right now. If you need a healing, just stand on this side. If you, if you want just to pray over deliverance, I want you right here. And then for anything else, we want you on this side. I'm just trying some things different. Sometimes we've got to change things up. Sometimes we just got to change things up. Believe God that God's going to do some miracles. Y'all just go on and come on up. Just make light.
God is moving. God is moving through your body. Except Brian during the service, he's like, it's chill. He's just he's moving. The Lord's moving in it. Father, we believe right now that his job and his finances will be strong. That his attitude and, and his work ethics will get higher to your, to your level of work ethics. And Father, we believe right now, Father, you'll give him favor. Even when he thought he lost it, that he'll get favor with his job. And with those that are, you know, you say, Lord, that you give us favor both with God and with man. And we believe that for him right now. We believe it for him right now. And most of all, Father, Father, don't let him get aside, Father, and be depressed. Let him get strong and get around people. Get around people. God is saying, hang around the people that lift, uplift you, not the people that tear you down. People have said things about you, have hurt you. And you don't, don't, don't hang around those people. Don't try and get, you can't make a person like you. They either do or they don't. Find, and you have friends that you know you can hang out with, and they want to love you. Let them. Let them. Father, we just ask for a blessing in Jesus' name. Father, we speak healing, Father, to this wisdom tooth, Father. Father, where it's cutting in, Father, we pray that it just cuts it wide, Father. We pray for it in Jesus' name, by this pain, we be lifted even now, Father. We speak to this eye right now. Father, this eye is commanded to be healed in Jesus' name. Father, you know what's causing it. It doesn't matter what causes it. We just command it to leave right now. And Father, we pray, Father, that her faith will grow according to how she puts her faith into the Word. Hear the word, let her grow. And Father, you will bless her. You will bless her tremendously. Her dreams are not dead, is what God is saying. Whatever you're believing for to do in your life, it's not dead. You just have to work it and just believe. It may start a little, but it will be, end up being a lot. Satan to leave his back to you. Just command the physical parts of his back to be healed in this very time. In this in Jesus' name. Feel the warmth on it. Father, we believe right now. Father, we believe the warmth that we're feeling. There it goes. It's starting to move. Oh, there it goes. Robaki. Heal. Heal in Jesus' name. Father, we bless her. We anoint her. Let her be used by you in great ways. Never deny your call and let her constantly be in front of you. Ask it, Father, for just your your continual grace on all that she does in Jesus' name. Would you raise your hands and praise the Lord? Come on and magnify the Lord. Not only did the Lord heal, but I, as he spoke with the word of knowledge, there was those that I knew the situation, and he spoke exactly 
prayed for the job, prayed for finances, prayed for individual things, personal things in their life. And so God really used him this morning. We thank God for speaking. Amen. That's the way that God does it. He uses humans, and he speaks through vessels, and God speaks and encourages people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just love him right now. Just love the Lord. Amen. Just love him. Let me pray. God can do it. Just struggle through it. Look to God and you're struggling through stuff. You'd like it to work. You'd like things to happen. But the struggle is so hard on you. But God said, you look to him. God's going to take all the struggles away from you. So now we lay hands on you, and the struggle's going to start leaving you. Okay? And your nerves, too. And you just can't, just can't get things together. You want to even doing things, even around the house, whatever you do, you just can't get it together because your nerves. And it seems like it's not in there, but you're going to enjoy it again. God's fixing to touch you. And God loves you, too. Don't you ever forget, God loves you. That's why he's personally speaking to you. He loves you, and God's going to do something for you. Because your heart wants God to, and he's going to do it. Amen. Raise your hand. Let me give you that. This has been like a great confusion. She doesn't know how to work about it, get out of it and everything. The Lord said, just give it to her, and I'm going to work it out. Give it to her. In Jesus' name, nerves be still, and all this to release you. There he is. Release you and all the worry to go, the fret to go. And don't worry about things. Don't worry about things. Don't worry about things. Just seek God, and things are going to begin to happen. And God's going to take care of the needs. He's going to take care of it. Now, peace, and she's going to rest in her spirit in this moment. Anointing of the Lord. Holy Ghost. All this. Release. In the name of Jesus, release. And peace be with you. Peace. And all the struggling to go from this moment, we rebuke the work of the enemy that's come against them. We bind the hands of Satan and command to go, not to come back. In the name of Jesus, touch her and heal her from way back, God. This has been from way back. But you're going to heal her and straighten this out from this moment in her body. In the name of Jesus, now. Now, be healed. Release. Now. There he is. There he is. Joy is going to flow through her. She's going to enjoy life again. The peace is going to be there. Now, be healed. And all this regulated normally in the name of Jesus, be whole. There's the anointing. There it is. There's that anointing again. There it is. There's the anointing again right now. Now, All of it's releasing. You've been healing way inside. All the hurting is being healed, God. From this moment, in peace, in Jesus' name, now. Things are going to begin to happen. 
you know, things can open up for you. They can open up for you. You watch them say. You, you're going to stop struggling here and there, trying to put things together, even your finances, because God's fixing to move and loosen it for you. Give the Lord a big hand. Come on and praise him. I feel the Lord in this place this morning. Come on, I feel the Lord. Would you stand to your feet? Would you just love him? Come on and love the anointing of God is in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Sam, would you get that offering? We want to pick up a, a good offering for uh, Brother Dan as a song. We need you.